In this video, we will talk about convexity of a bond. We will make use of some of the concepts covered in videos on duration. The price yield curve shown in this graph shows a nonlinear relationship between the price of a bond and its yield. The gradient of this straight line that's tangent to the price yield curve at yield y bar is called duration and it's used to approximate the change in bond price in response to change in interest rate. Take for example the change in yield from y bar to y1. Since duration is a linear measure, it will use this straight line that's tangent to the price yield curve to estimate the new price of the bond of P1 at the new yield Y1. But because bond price and yield do not have a linear relationship, there's some measurement error in the price estimated using duration and the actual price at the new yield. This measurement error occurs because duration is unable to capture the nonlinear relationship between the price of a bond and its yield. So to better approximate change in bond price due to change in yield, we need to know the convexity measure that will help us capture that part of price change that duration is unable to capture. Let convexity be denoted by C. Then mathematically, convexity can be calculated as follows. The price of a bond, if yield goes up, plus the price of a bond, if yield goes down minus two times the initial price of a bond divided by two times the initial price of a bond times change in yield square. Let's take an example. Consider a two-year 8% coupon bond where coupons are paid semi-annually and face value of this bond equals a thousand dollars and yield to maturity of this bond is 10%. So the current price of this bond equals 964.54 dollars and the modified duration of this bond denoted by D with a subscript MOD equals 1.7955 we know that modified duration measures bonds approximate price sensitivity to changes in interest rates so if yield increases by 1% bond price is expected to come down by 1.7955% and if yield decreases by 1%, price is expected to increase by approximately 1.7955%. Let's check how accurately duration measures this percentage change in price. If yield goes up from 10% to 11%, the new price of the bond goes down to 940 seven point four two dollars this implies a percentage change in price equal to the new price of nine forty seven point four two dollars minus the original price of nine sixty four point five four dollars divided by the original price of 964.54 dollars and this equals negative 1.775 percent we're showing this to three decimal places because we want to highlight the impact of convexity adjustment later on on the other hand if yield decreases from 10 percent to 9%, the price of a bond goes up to 982.06 dollars. This corresponds to a percentage 
change in price equal to the new price of 982.06 dollars minus the original price of 964.54 dollars divided by the original price of 964.54 dollars which equals 1.817 so while duration does a reasonable job at estimating the percentage change in price, there's still some measurement error. For example, duration predicted that if yield goes up from 10% to 11%, the price of the bond will come down by 1.7955%, whereas in reality, it came down by 1.775%. On the other hand, duration predicted that if yield goes down from 10% to 9%, price of the bond will go up by 1.7955%, whereas in reality, the bond price went up by 1.817%. It is this measurement error that can be reduced by convexity measure. And in our example, convexity equals the price of a bond if yield goes up from 10% to 11%, which is $947.42, plus the price of a bond if yield goes down from 10% to 9%, which is $982.06, minus two times the initial price of $964.54, divided by two times the initial price of $964.54, times the change in yield, which is 1% in our example square. And this equals 2.09. So in addition to duration estimated change, the convexity adjustment that we have to make equals convexity times the change in yield square, which in our example equals convexity of 2.09 times the change in yield, which is 1% square, which equals 0.0209%. So let's check how this convexity adjustment improves our estimation of percentage change in price. When yield goes up from 10% to 11%, duration estimates that bond price will change by negative 1.7955%. But there's a convexity adjustment to that equal to 0.0209%, which brings the total price change equal to negative 1.775%. This is exactly equal to the actual change of negative 1.775%. Similarly, when yield decreases from 10% to 9%, duration would predict that bond price would go up by 1.7955%. And adding the convexity adjustment to that, we get the total percentage change in price equal to 1.816%. This change is very close to the actual percentage price change of 1.817%. So we can see how convexity adjustment has improved our estimation of percentage change in price. Notice how convexity adjustment is positive in both cases, whether yields go up or they go down, which is consistent with the fact that a non-callable bond has positive convexity. In other words, we know that any bond price calculated using duration alone would be estimated using this straight tangent line. Since this line lies below the price yield curve, if yield changes from Y bar, any price estimated using this line will be less than the actual price of the bond at that new yield. 
So the benefit of positive convexity adjustment is that it adds to the new price and reduces the measurement error that we get using duration alone. So we have learned how to calculate convexity of a bond and how convexity adjustment is applied to capture that part of bond's price change that duration is unable to capture. If there are any questions or comments, please feel free to post.